As we continue our discussion on the Class E network, we're going to uh, make a few comments on the quality factor of the network. So as you know, the Class E network looks like a slightly off-tuned series resonant network where we have some excess inductance that's provided by uh, L, which has a nominal value of 1.1525 times R opt. I should say it has a nominal reactance of 1.1525 times R opt. Now we note for best efficiency, we typically want the quality factor of the network to be as high as possible. In other words, we would want Q network to be headed towards infinity. If the network quality factor were infinity, we would select only the switching frequency to be delivered to the load R opt, and we would reject all other frequencies. Now we know that our network quality factor is given by the following. In this case, we're not doing any impedance transformation, so it's just the series resonant quality factor or the reactance divided by the resistance. Now from this, we can find the value of the inductance in the series resonant network and capacitance in the series resonant network given uh, Q network and R opt. Now it's worth noting that we can never actually achieve a network quality factor of infinity because of the losses in the matching network. Uh, but this is generally okay uh, for one uh, reason, or actually for two reasons. The first reason is that generally we have a fixed amount of bandwidth that we need to cover. So only being able to cover one frequency wouldn't be very good for us. Now, the second reason, as was noted by Fritz Robb in uh, a few classical papers, notably JSSC of February 1978, the class E does very well at low to moderate network quality factors. Now, in his papers, he noted that for a network quality factor as low as one, the drain efficiency of the class EPA could be still above 90%. Now, this doesn't include any other non-idealities like switching losses or matching network losses, uh, but it, it does show that the, the uh, class E network is resilient. So noting here, we would like to have higher quality factor if possible, but uh, it's not always a bad thing to have a bit lower quality factor because we need to cover uh, wide bandwidths, not just single frequencies. And we uh, note that the class E does well, even when we only have moderate quality factors, even as low as one. Now, when we implement class E power amplifiers in integrated circuits, often we're going to do it with differential variants of the class E network. And the primary reason for this is on integrated circuits, transistors are relatively cheap uh, and implementing differential circuits does a lot of things that, that are positive for us from uh, being able to do some harmonic rejection uh, to having better noise performance. So here, our uh, one of the primary advantages that we get is that if we use a, a differential uh, amplifier, the optimum termination impedance for the differential amplifier to achieve the same output power as a single-ended uh, amplifier is four times the single-ended R opt. Now this is critical for us as uh, an increase of a factor of four here means that our matching network transformation doesn't have to be quite as big and the losses in the matching network won't be as big. Now, another thing that we're going to do on an integrated circuit here is to cascode. And when we cascode in a class E network, it is not uh, the classic reason that we cascode. Uh, it's uh, just to distribute voltage stress across multiple transistors. Now, a cascode here doesn't come for free. It comes at the expense of either a higher switching resistance because the, uh, the stack of transistors has a higher switching resistance or we might need to make the transistors wider, which means that we'll have a larger drain parasitic. Now, one thing to remember about the class E network is that we may be able to absorb the drain parasitic into our network. Now here I've drawn the drain parasitic and we know that we might implement the shunt susceptance just by making a differential capacitor uh, across the uh, differential output. This differential capacitor will have a value of B opt from our earlier calculation divided by two. Now we're further going to have a differential class E network.
The reason that we can use the thick gate IO transistors is that these devices are not switching, uh, but they're basically staying in deep sub threshold uh, and just being used to distribute voltage stress. Now, you note, if you use thick gate devices, typically they need to be a bit wider, which means that we would have additional parasitic uh, at the drain that may have to be absorbed into the Class E network. So when we look at the Class E network, we have a few pros and a few cons, and we'll write those out now. So here the pros are, when we use the differential topology, we have better harmonic rejection, particularly of even order harmonics. Uh, this is good because it means that our spectrum can be cleaner. We have a higher R opt in order to deliver the same output power due to the differential structure. This generally means that our efficiency can be improved because the matching network losses will be reduced. And due to the cascode, we have higher voltage tolerance than we would otherwise. The cons of such a topology are that the layout is generally more complex in a differential structure, and this is because of the symmetry that's necessary. And also, we typically, due to the cascode uh, and the layout, have higher drain capacitance or switching resistance, which results in impact on either a lower maximum operating frequency or lower efficiency. So that will do it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we will start to look at uh, uh, some practical implementations that I had done in my PhD dissertation.